What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course, the show of the same name as the channel that you're now watching. Thanks for clicking on the live stream. Today we're going to be talking about just getting back to basics a little bit, making sure everybody understands how to set up a radio for everybody starting out, wanting to get into ham radio. What does that even mean, like set up and operate a radio? It can mean a lot of things. It can mean a handheld, it can mean a mobile radio like you'd put in a car, and it could mean HF radio, my favorite type of radio. So we're going to walk through a couple of uh, different radios, how to use them effectively, and uh, and get on the air. Enjoy the memes as we kick things off. And how's it going, everybody? I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Again, got some fun. We're going to start out just explaining the, the simple approach of getting a radio on the air. You could just be for listening. Uh, for those of you that are technicians that want to start receiving HF radio, maybe you have access to an HF radio. And we're going to look at a radio that uh, probably not in everybody's kind of wheelhouse right now, but for technicians, particularly those that are starting out, You'll be able to use this right out of the gate, and you'll be able to get some HF use case as 10 meters is absolutely exploding right now. So stay tuned for that. But first, I got a couple of notes before we dive right in here. If you want to help support the channel, you should go check out their website. It's connected. Geez, I didn't expect it to pop up. Amtactical.com. It's the website that my wife runs for our merch store. It's getting cold out there, everybody. And if you go to clothing and you go to hoodies, we have quite the assortment of hoodies, including my favorite, the FT8 waterfall hoodie. Definitely not something you're going to be able to find <laughs> in just any store. So check that out, hamtactical.com. Uh, also, everything we've talked about or, or I've hit, that's definitely not it. There it is. Everything you know that we talk about on the live streams, lots of my review items, all that goes to the Amazon store, at least for links, so you can find it very easily and, and get quick access to all this stuff. And it goes from last couple of weeks ago, so the 73-hour ham radio go bag, um, Raspberry Pis, SDR, software-defined radios, even 3D printing tools and things to get set up for bow fangs or building antennas. It's all there over on the Amazon. So if you take the link, it'll take you on over there. So thanks so much for checking that out. All right. So what I want to talk about, and we, we've got a couple of radios here we're going to cover, but I, I want to give kind of an overview on how to use these things, right? So we'll start out with handhelds and kind of work our way up. And, and eventually we're, we're going to get over to this guy which is a 10-meter radio, and, and the world of 10 meters for technicians is, is quite live right now. So it's a really good time to be a technician, particularly uh, as, uh, as things start to heat up, as it were. So thanks, everybody, for coming in. Who do we got in the chat? Ah, I see Andy. Hey, thanks, Andy, for coming in. I saw the K Merds himself, Kate MRD. What's up? Arthur. Hey, Arthur evening uh yeah thank you very much for that appreciate it as always this is a live stream so as questions come in uh feel free to just at me hammer radio crash course or say question in the chat i'll see it and we can talk about it oh yeah sean sean saw that for anybody that is a, a podcast listener this uh, radio has been recommended a couple of times and so we'll we'll dive into it a bit but obviously there'll be a review forthcoming uh john amadeo has been talking and recommending that technicians look into 10 meters and normally i'd be like oh 10 meters is oh, it's like to devote a whole radio to just doing 10 meters and that's all it can do it always feels like ooh, such a such a slam to the pocketbook but actually uh if you think about it till 2025 we're on the upswing of the solar cycle so 10 meters is only going to get better and better and then it's going to start to kind of sunset and ease down so we still got three years, four years potentially of like really good 10 meter propagation in our future. So 10 meters is still going to be really good. We're just going to have to accept that it's not going to be necessarily a 24-7 band, right? But 
you know, if you're a technician just starting out, that may be a way to go. And for something that's two hundred to three hundred dollars, not bad at all. So, all right, let's let's throw it over really quick, and we'll talk about some things to keep in mind as you're starting out with your amateur radio journey. So it should be mentioned, and I'm just going to cover this up front uh, in the the setup phase, and then we'll come back to operation of these radios. But handhelds generally are going to require two things: your battery, because <laughs> it's not going to turn on without some kind of power source. A lot of HTs will also have a power connection on the side. This one's always kind of a pain to get out, but you can power it off of a, a DC, AC to DC power adapter. Sometimes they'll have battery swap outs for a car plug. And then obviously before you turn on an HT, I know it, it's not really gonna hurt it. And I know a lot of people have talked about it. I know Randy has made quite a funny video on running a radio without an antenna. Well, that's true, and you're probably not going to hurt anything. I highly recommend that you do indeed have have an antenna connected. Save your radio potentially. Not necessarily something to, to worry about that much, but important nonetheless. So, yeah, for reals, Jody, the, it, the entire thing, there's no battery in it. It is purely powered by the tears of people who can no longer buy one. And regardless of how expensive the radio is, this D74 probably being like one of the most expensive amateur radio HTs you can purchase, functions the same. They're, they're FM, frequency modulation radios, PTT on the side. We'll get into it a little bit as we get to the operation side of things. But let's uh, flip over to this 10 meter radio and let's talk about it for a second. Because guess what? There's a lot of similarities in what you do with this radio like you would just about any other radio. Let me get some good, good light on it here. All right. I'm going to disconnect it from the antenna. All right. So before you even start playing around with the front of, of any type of radio, you're going to have to look around the back on a lot of them. And this is a pretty simple one to to talk about here. So generally, they're going to have an antenna connector. And, and in this case, I have a BNC adapter put on here. And the reason for that, I'll explain. Uh, next to it is a power lead. All these radios, pretty much everything that you're going to deal with is going to require two, if not three things. Connection to an antenna, connection to power, and then likely some kind of input device. And the input device could be Morse code. The input device could be a speaker mic. Oftentimes, for those starting out, it's going to be a speaker mic, something that you might have in a car, for instance. So I have an adapter hooked on here. Normally, this would be a, a PL239 connector. But right now, I have a BNC connector because we're going to be switching between BNC a lot for this video. There will sometimes be other ports like an external speaker port. A lot of mobile radios will have something like this. Sometimes they'll have a data port as well. This one has a data port, very interesting. Sometimes that's used for just updating firmware. Sometimes it can be used for actually doing data modes, digital modes. And you might have heard the term FT8 or PSK31. That would be where you'd connect your computer potentially. Now, th this radio, I don't know if it actually does digital modes, and that's not really why I bought it. Nonetheless, uh, it is important to, to note that as you're kind of going forward with whichever radio you purchase. Now, this radio has a hardwired connector, meaning this power line is, is physically always connected, and I've terminated it in, into what's called a power pole connector. Now, with a power pole connector, we can interface things like a battery. And here's a battery. In fact, I'll go back to the overhead to show you this. There's a battery here. This is a 12 volt, 9 amp hour battery, relatively portable. It has a power, I'm sorry, it has a power pole connector on the end here. If we plug those two guys together and we attach an antenna to the back of this radio, then we'll at least be able to turn it on. And so that's what we're going to test out right now. So let's turn this radio on. Ten meters might be a little quiet right now. Got some noise coming in. Now, what we don't have connected yet is a battery. I'm sorry, a speaker mic, which generally is going to be some kind of multi-pinned connector at the front of the radio or possibly on the side of the radio, and it probably will come in the kit. <laughs> Your speaker mic will probably likely come in the kit, so you can attach it. Just push it right in and screw down the collar. Pretty pretty simple at this point. Nothing too exciting, nothing too special.
All right, so that's a traditional, what you would call mobile radio type setup. Let's go back to the overhead, see if there's anything to mention here. We've got our speaker mic connected for this radio. It is on, antenna is connected, and, and reminder, everything I said, everything I said about the HT is doubly true with mobile radios or HF radios. You want to make sure that you have an antenna connected before you go ahead and turn on the radio, particularly before you key the radio. So we'll come back to this guy in a second. No squelch is turned on this radio. There's the squelch. There, we found it. <laughs> Don't really need a squelch on HF, but it does get relatively loud. We'll come back to that guy in a minute. All right. Now, portable radios are semi very similar in the same kind of sense that you're going to have to provide it 12 volts of power. You're going to have to connect a microphone of some kind and an antenna. Uh, but a lot of them will have a power source included. So like the ICOM 705, these QRP radios will generally have some kind of power supply. Same goes for the Yesu 818. This guy, in fact, has a little battery compartment that's hidden inside the bottom of the radio here which has the battery pack right there as you can see this is a custom aftermarket battery pack but you get the idea so really you're only concerned with is getting the antenna connection or if you wanted to run off external power then you'd plug into say again that battery using that power pole connector antenna port and your speaker mic is going to be on the side here and they vary in their capabilities i have a 705 here the 705 has two pin type jacks what we call tip ring ring sleeve jacks and they are different dimensions so this is a 3.5 millimeter and i think that's a 2.5 or two yeah i think it's 2.5 or somebody will correct me in the chat and that goes in the side here and generally the microphone is here at the bottom if you plug in both then you will no longer hear out of the speaker in the front of the radio. You'll hear out of the handheld mic. Uh, those are the big kind of, that's what you got to do to just connect the thing, right? That's our big steps just to get off the ground. Now, we're making a lot of assumptions here. The first assumption is, is that you have a good antenna, right? Antennas make the world go round, whether you're doing HF or VHF, UHF work. So they are pretty much the most important part of your kit. I've made a lot of live stream videos and just my standard short form videos talking about the importance of antennas, different types of antennas and what you should look for and how you set them up. Because generally, if you're talking VHF, UHF, two meters and 70 centimeters, Right out of the box, you can just kind of use it. I know a lot of people go to the nines and really check things out with their VHF, UHF antennas. And to a certain point, you likely will have to if you go into things like weak signal mode, which is going to be single sideband over two meters or 70 centimeters. Then, yeah, you may be assembling an antenna and doing that kind of stuff. But if you're talking about like slapping an antenna on a handheld or connecting an antenna to a mobile radio, and driving about town, then there's generally not a lot you're going to have to do with it other than make sure that you have good connection and that your coax is sound, meaning it's not fully impregnated with water like it's been just getting rained on and your connectors didn't have any waterproofing on it. As long as you have good quality coax and a, and a decent antenna that has a waterproof connection and I've made videos on that as well, uh, then you should be okay as far as VHF, UHF is concerned. HF is a different world entirely. You know, there's a lot of folks, uh, some that are watching right now, KMRD being one of them, a lot of folks on YouTube that make a ton of videos just talking about antennas and the importance of antennas, among other things, but a lot of talk about antennas. Antennas are going to be, at the end of the day, one of the most important things you can do for your shack to make sure that you're always getting out to the best of your abilities and understand the compromise that comes into play with antennas. Highly portable antennas sometimes don't get out that well. Really beefy antennas that take a little while to set up generally do pretty good. I'm thinking of like Buddy Hex in my mind, great portable antenna. Not the easiest thing to lug around and set up versus a... Uh, Elecraft AX1, extremely easy to set up, but pretty compromised. All right. 
Oh, hey, thanks, uh, Matt Denny. By the way, Matt, thanks for reminding me. The sale is still good on uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. There is a link in the description if you watched last week's live stream and you perhaps didn't know if you should pull the trigger on Ham Radio Deluxe to get a full year of updates and uh, live tech support. Maybe you've changed your mind. I don't know, but that deal is still live. So if you're interested in that, take the link in the description and use the code HRCC25 or HRCC20. I don't remember if it's 20% off or 25. The description will tell you because it didn't change from last week. So very good. All right, let's go back to the overhead here and uh, talk about that HT again. All right, so we'll start up with the HTs in the house for those that are technicians most likely starting out in the world of amateur radio how do you use an ht i'm not going to be able to go through the all the the clever differences and interesting parts of how to program repeaters i have made programming videos so make sure to go check those out i'm going to grab a different antenna here for the sake of this hold on For the sake of my san sanity, I will take off the signal stick because it's banging across the shack here. And I'll put on the Miracle Baby. What a ridiculous little antenna this is. All right. So if you want to know the details, the deep dive on any HT, go pick up the manual. No joke. You, you got to go get dirty with the manual a little bit here. But how to operate them is, is fairly straightforward. Power button's on the side. It starts. Now, they're, they're generally going to run in, in two primary modes of operation, and, and some HTs are totally built different. Like, this is the, the full bells and whistles of handhelds. This will do pretty much everything. But the thing to keep in mind is that you generally have two ways of running it. You can run it as VHF, a uh, VFO control, meaning you can just go in and adjust the frequencies by potentially rolling the dial, or you can go into memory mode where you have memory channels that are set up. In this case, this is pretty much a brand new radio that has nothing but um, weather channels because I've been using it VFO for APRS, right? So if you click back on VFO, then you can go in and make adjustments to the frequencies. Might I recommend that if you're going to enter a frequency that you go 145520 as the first frequency that you load in your radio. And if I remember correctly, if I remember my Kenwood, <laughs> it's fun to sit down and, and just go like, hey, I'm going to wing it. You click the F button and you go memory in. Hey, store in memory. Yeah, boy. Let's go with the one channel. And there we go. So now I've added that uh, to memory. Let's click OK again. Hey, there we go. So memory group. The first one is 145. Oh, 146. I did that wrong. Let's fix it. Go back to VFO. 146520. That's the right frequency. Let's go overwrite that one. <laughs> Screwing myself up. Let's go back to VFO. That's the guy. And memory. Yep. There we go. We got it. Display. 146520. Now, all my friends on 146520 will be able to hit hear me when I'm out there talking. And if I want to, I would set up APRS as well, and so on and so forth. Now, I will mention, um, this is a radio that goes well beyond that of a Baofeng. Let me grab one of those real quick. So with your Baofengs, we've, we pretty much just covered the basis on what they can do, right? We can go VFO, memory mode, and channel mode. And in channel mode, which it's saying right there, we can scroll through a whole list of channels that we have set up. In VFO mode, again, now we're just typing for frequencies, right? That's pretty much how Baofengs work. This is going to be frequency uh, modulation only, frequency modulation only, meaning that's its mode of operation. For radios like this Kenwood or potentially digital radios that work DMR, Yaesu System Fusion, or in this case, D-Star, and there's usually some kind of mode of operation. Right now, we're running FM. So if you're going to talk on 146.520, make sure that you're in FM mode. However, if you wanted to change that, there's usually a button that says mode. And that'll change you into DV, which DV in this case is digital voice. You'll see that interchangeably used with the ICOMs and the Kenwood radios. This does DV and FM. 
and it will also do uh, receiving for single sideband and CW for Morse code. So this radio happens to do a whole lot, but the primary functionality is let's set a frequency, whether you're in VFO mode or memory, memory slots, memory records, memory, what's memory, MR, memory record? That's probably what it is. Somebody will correct me in the chat. Um, and then once you're on the frequency now, now what can you do? Well, you can PTT, you can talk into the mic, or you can listen as it is right now. But hey, I hear nothing. I literally hear no noise. What's going on there? Well, there's this thing called squelch. And we use squelch very often on 2 meters and 70 centimeters because it's kind of a, a noisy band and you're, you're not going to do that well as far as noise goes to begin with. Case in point, there's usually a button on the side of a lot of radios that if you click it, there's the white noise. Memory recall, Don says. Thank you, Don, for that. Memory recall. Very good. That's what MR stands for. So if you want to change the squelch, uh, which is, again, it's kind of a, let's turn the receiver off until a, Let's turn the speaker off until a loud enough signal comes in, a high enough signal strength to break through the squelch, and we'll push it to the speaker. So if you adjust that, a lot of them will have a button for squelch. In this case, it's the same button as the monitor button on the side here, but you usually have to get into it a different way. In this case, we have to click the F button and then squelch, and now we can adjust it. There's squelch off, and there's a little bit of squelch and a little more squelch, level 2 squelch. So there we go. Done. All right. Talkie talkie. Hold the PTT. Give your call sign. Get on the air. That's pretty much the straightforward of how how handhelds work. Uh, there's obviously way more that goes into this, but once you have it programmed, that's the meat and potatoes of it is you go back into memory mode, be in the memory channel of what you want, and then hit the PTT. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu radio test. So you can PTT like that. Very good. All right. Same concept. Uh, let's flip it over here for a second. Squelch is a threshold. That's also a really good way of saying that, Jody. You've got a way of, with words on these terms for the amateur radios. So here's another example. Let me flip this over here. One second while I move camera. So everything we just talked about with... Um, with handheld antennas, we also have mobile antennas. And this happens to be my mobile radio for VHF, UHF. It's a dual bander, just like my handheld is. And it displays the A and the B channel simultaneously. And there's actually two sets of buttons to control the A or the B side. Right now, we're on 562 or 146.520. It has a physical volume control and a physical squelch control. There's a squelch off, turning it back on, back down and back off. Generally, you switch between the A and the B side by clicking a button here or a button here in the main moves. This has a VFO, two dials. This one has an eyeball on it. And you can roll through different memory channels, in this case, memory channels. You can see that we got all kinds of weirdness on here. All right, we'll go back down. There we go. Uh, now, if you want to go back into M memory recall or VFO, there's two discrete buttons. Click that, and now we're back in VFO tune mode versus... <laughs> and there we go. We got somebody potentially watching the stream. Maybe. I don't know. So that's mobile. It's just a big HT, if you think about it, with discrete controls. There is power output settings, this low button. If you click that, we're now in low power, medium power. And then high power is off. HTs work the same way, pretty much. Might as well run them high power most of the time. If you can make a connection or you can make your contact with lower power, I suggest you do so. So that's what I would recommend with that. 52 is so much fun on a trip. Yeah, I would also recommend 52 is the hotness in Southern California. So for anybody down here in SoCal, yay, buddy, get on 146.520. The two-meter crew is a lot of fun. In fact, we're ha we had a swap meet not too long ago, the two-meter crew. Uh, we were met up at an air gun shop, like legit hunting and target shooting air gun, uh, and I will be posting a video on that next week. 
swap meet, ham swap, the whole nine yards, and it was uh, it was also at this really really cool air gun shop. If you think uh, ham radios are expensive, you should get into air rifles, everybody. Not to say that we need another expensive hobby, but uh, it's a lot of fun. So look forward to that. Joe is the proprietor of this shop, and he was kind enough to let us use the parking lot in, in front of his store as a ham fest, which he has quite a lot of gear that we displayed. All right, so that was uh, HTs and mobiles. Pretty straightforward. There's not a... Um, it, okay, I mean, I want to make sure I don't, don't get anybody's hopes up here. Your radio, whichever radio you buy, your HT... Um, your mobile, your HF radio will likely have features that other radios do not. In the world of HTs, HTs can have some fairly esoteric features built into them. If you're looking at a Baofeng, there's not a lot of esoteric features. It's just a very straightforward VFO, sit the, set the frequency, talk on it, or set the memory channel, call those up and use them. Very straightforward. Some radios do things like APRS, a video that I released a week uh, last week. Um, or they'll do digital modes, like we said, digital voice. And they will have very specific menu controls to be able to do that. But the fundamentals of this are the same. You're either going to use VFO to get the frequency, or you're going to use the memory channels, memory recall, thanks, Don, to set whichever memory channel you want to be on. And then you're just going to talk on it. The modes of operation may change from FM to DV, digital voice, but it's kind of the same. Sometimes you, you're using APRs, which is more like a computery thing, but yeah, hopefully you get the idea. All right, so let's go back to Mr. Uh, 10 meter radio here. This is the Anytone. All I know is it's the 6666. Totally ridiculous um, <laughs> radio name. Let's get some light on it here. How's that? A little bit better? Kind of, sort of, kind of, maybe. So now you're, you're uh, getting into HF is going to be a little bit different. With this type of radio, there we go. You're going to have some more discrete controls that do things that are a bit different. And they're important. They're in things that you need to, need to focus on and need to learn. So let's... Nope, that's, gonna, that's not going to work for you. Here we go. All right, let's start here. So in this case, this radio has a twist dial for the on-off control. And it has to also be the volume control. We don't generally run HF in squelch uh, or have squelch on. We like to hear all the beautiful HF noises. And I am going to tune down to the technician portion of 10 meters, although I don't expect a lot of activity. All right, so starting up here on the left... You have RF gain, and it's represented as RFG right there. And there's also a power dial. This is one of those radios that has two. It has two controls. There's a forward twisty bit and a backward, a back end twisty bit. So this is your power output, and this is your RF gain. See how the the lines just drop down? There, we lost our RF gain, and there's our RF gain. It's back in. So the RF gain is basically how well your radio can hear. So we adjust that to engage the receiver on the radio, if you will. In some cases, you could have a lot of noise on the band, as this is kind of demonstrating here, saying, hey, that's, that's too high. We don't want to overload the receiver side of the radio so let's just let's just dial that back a little bit until we're just kind of right on nope that's the power you got to get used to this radio this is a bit new controls for me let's just dial it down to we're right right yeah just just right in there just like kind of licking back and forth a little bit rf gain is one of the most important controls that your radio uh, that you adjust in your hf radio if you have that capability it is going to make your receiving of stations a whole lot easier and make it more enjoyable too, as controlling the RF gain will generally give you a better sound output uh, from your receiver. So now this radio is an HF radio, so it is going to have upper sideband as its mode of operation instead of FM being the primary. But just like the HTs in the mobile, there's a mode button right there. If we click mode, let's see what happens. 
Now we're on lower sideband. For technicians, you're, you're probably not used to hearing or using modes like lower sideband or upper sideband, but uh, we generally use this for HF. If we hit mode again, that's the PA output. This is a, a basically a modified CB radio. And we do have FM as well. This will run FM. So, okay, great. We don't really do that. Um, on HF, but 10 meters is a unique band where there are still 10 meter repeaters that are available. And we definitely use FM for 10 meter repeaters. We also have AM, amplitude modulation, and then back over to upper sideband. HF radios are generally gonna have those four modes of operation. Some will have an additional mode for digital, digital processing, digital operation of the radio. So keep that as mine as well. This has a band button. I don't know why, because it just really jumps through the band quickly. That's what it does. Um, because this is just a 10 meter radio. And this is channelized as well. So you could set memory channels or frequency or just have VFO. And by and large, uh, the VFO control is going to be your best friend in HF radio. Well, VHF, UHF radios have a VFO control, they're generally not as prominent or as oft used as they are in HF. And this is actually a pretty small boy uh, for what we generally use on HF. So let's, let's give her a twist. Oh, yeah, feel that clicking this? Something that uh, HF radios often don't have is this clicking knob. It's generally a free-rolling VFO. Now... If you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, are you kidding? This guy's going to scroll through this whole thing. Operating HF and with a VFO like this, you can often adjust where the tuning point is. So 28 megahertz is, is the 10 meter space within the band. If I push this, now we're going to adjust this guy. Very granular control. And if I push it again, we're going to move up. Push it again, we move up even more. So now we can jump through the band really quickly. Let's go back to 28.3 is the technician portion. So let's go to that seven. There we go. And let's tune around. Anybody out there in TV land? Maybe we're going too fast, so we can click this again. Now we're there. Now we can go a little bit slower. Being able to control your VFO is going to be one of the most important things you do with HF radio. It's going to be the thing that allows you to get on frequency quick and be able to move from low sides of the band to the high side of the band very quickly. So knowing your radio and knowing how to do that is going to be vitally important. You can still go through a little slower like this. Pretty straightforward. Uh yeah, let me let me so so I, I should I should go ahead and just say, you know what the the real secret is to knowing if you're getting out or you're getting signals and where you're picking them up is uh just just have a uh, radio with a waterfall and then put your antenna. And then put your antenna on it like this. So it doesn't look like, yeah, it's pretty quiet out there right now. 10 meters is pretty much not alive. We'll switch over to this in a second. Uh, I'm going to switch back to the 705, and, and we're going to talk about that for a little bit. Let me check for questions, though, as we take a little break here. Didn't I take, no, the, the it's, it's on. I plugged it back in. Yeah, you can see that 10 meters is, is pretty much D-E-D. -E -D. <laughs> yeah, dead. <laughs> Definitely dead. <laughs> All right, let me check for questions. I think I saw another one. Go to 270025. Uh, Always a good time. Do techs have any FM privileges? Yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's part of the reason I'm doing this. Do techs have any FM privileges? Oh, for 10 meters. Sorry. Okay. Um, no, technically not. Uh, they, they work in 28.30 up to 28,400 on upper sideband. So no, you don't have FM privileges. The FM repeaters are in the higher side of the bands. 
So good, good question. Very good question. Question, do any of you listen to, do you listen to any of the repeaters in SoCal? I do, but not as often as I used to. I primarily get on two meter simplex. Uh, do, 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 do. Have you got any 10 meter repeaters in your area? Yeah, digital analog ham. Yeah, I saw your comment or your uh, your DM you sent me earlier. I think there are a few. I think we have more 220 repeaters in the area than uh, than 10 meters, but you know. On that radio, you can go down to 12, uh, 12 meters. Oh, so this will do CB too. Ooh, I bet my step IR tune it too. We should We should try that one day. Not today. I'm probably not going to do that live for, for y'all, but maybe maybe we'll have some fun with that. Let me get the 705 uh, get going over here. So give me, give me one second. So similar concept. We're going to we're going to talk about a, another radio, HF radio. Uh, and, and by similar, I guess I should be a little more specific. The 705 is, is a more feature rich uh, HF radio. But the concepts that, that were on display with this simple 10 meter and uh radio is is pretty much the same so we're gonna re we're gonna use what we've already learned so for everybody that is paying attention at home maybe you're a technician and whatnot and you want to know how do i how do i just use these radios well we're kind of building a narrative here on how you go about using some of these radios and it's 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 pretty straightforward if you get right down to it at least from my point of view so okay we're gonna we're gonna plug in our friend the 705 Gonna get our microphone out of the way. 705 is kind of like my uh, go-to radio when I'm out and about. And let's square them up a little bit. How's that? Can you see that? That's too much. Lens cap is always a winner for lifting up the uh, 705. There we go. All right, so power button. Hey, on that... 10 meter radio you had just a volume dial well okay now you got a power button <laughs> not a big deal so we're stepping up a bit from the world of the 10 meter radio you are seeing way more controls and you're probably thinking to yourself oh my gosh this is a daunting amount of information what's going on here well, so volume is what we called it on that 10 meter antenna, but you're going to see it most often as AF gain or RF AF gain right there. Is that in focus? It is. It just says AF. That's volume control in ham radio speak. That is a lot of FT8 noises on 20 meters. That's what you're going to hear most often. Now, there's no discrete control for the RF gain like there was on, this, on that 10 meter radio, but you see RF right there. And what you'll often find with HF radios is if you push the dial, hey, look, now we can do RF gain, and we can go in there and adjust, and if you watch the waterfall, the signals will fade out and fade back in. Let's do that in a bigger view. I'm going to click on the M scope here, which is the waterfall. If I hold it down, now we get a bigger view of the waterfall. Let's do that again. Click the button, RF gain, we'll turn it down. It's like you're turning, you're muting the radio, but like slowly, slowly muting it. Slowly dialing back the gain. Now, on the 10 meter antenna, we had to push the VFO. Notice the VFO is much bigger, and oh boy, is it free, free flowing, free rolling VFO. If we go in here, what is it getting caught up? Oh, that's what's getting caught up on. There we go. If we go in here to the VFO now, look at we got all this fast control, and we're moving through the band too fast. That's way too fast. That's because we have this nine selected. If we click the zero, then we have a bit more slow roll control on this radio. In fact, let's increase the size of the waterfall. Right now we're only looking at a 10 kilohertz wide waterfall. So we're gonna hit span. That brings it up to 25, 50. Hey, look, we can see more stuff now. Let's bring it over. Let's slide up the frequency space a little bit. See if we can find somebody. We're not in the upper sideband portion of the band yet. And there it is. Look at all this activity. These are all people talking on 20 meters, not a technician band, but a very, very popular one.
We are at half volume at this point, going full volume here. Oh my god, my freaking ears! Where's that big signal? All right. So what have we learned so far? Well, we took what we learned from the 10 meter radio and we've applied it to a much more advanced radio, but adding a different way of doing gain control, a different way of controlling the VFO. But guess what? So far, we've used the same capabilities. We need to go in and we need to adjust the VFO. We can go quickly if we click on the higher kilohertz space and then ooh, look at that. We can jump right through the band really fast. Now, with this radio, you're going to do modes beyond that of just voice, like we saw 10 meters that was only voice. Let's slide down to the Morse code portion of the band. So how do we do that? We want to go from, this is kind of the middle point in the band, way down to the lower side of the band. So I've clicked the 7. That little arrow denotes my tuning spot. And I'm going to slide way, way down here. And do we have any activity? It doesn't look like a ton of activity for Morse code right now. Kind of quiet. But to change the mode of operation, we had that button on that 10 meter radio. What do we do here? Well, we click the little USB thing. And we change it to CW. Notice that the, the noise, the harshness of the noise also got mm, quieter. It almost feels like it's compressed. And part of the reason for that is I'll explain as we find a CW signal. Also, we're at 50k kilohertz wide on the waterfall. That's probably too big. We want to shrink that down because Morse code's tiny. It doesn't take up much space. So let's go back down to 5. Let's go to 10. Hey, look, there's a signal. Oh, see, my VFO was... I still had it on that 5, so let's, let's find the signal. We'll wait for them to come back. While we're waiting for them to come back, when you turn Morse code on, or CW is the mode of operation, continuous wave, it's going to reduce the bandwidth receive space that the signal is coming in on. There's one, buddy. And sometimes it's hard to center it directly. So some radios will have something called an auto-tune feature. The 705 does, and a lot of other radios do as well. So we'll wait for the signal to come back, and we'll hit the auto-tune button, and we'll watch it adjust automatically to what they call zero-beat the station. And zero-beating is where you line up your primary or center frequency on that of the transmitting station, or at least where you're hearing them. Of course, they went away. Oh, there's some... Ooh, big signal. Let's auto-tune them. There we go. Centered right away. So let's zoom way in on him by adjusting the waterfall. See how the auto-tune will pull him in? Just like that. So if you're in an environment, let's say right now it's it's really quiet, right? There's there's nobody else in here. But if it's like a very busy weekend or it's it's really uh, like a contest weekend or something where you have a lot of people that are out on the bands, then the other thing you might experience is with a contested environment that you're hearing too much of the other stations. The bandwidth is too wide for everything you're hearing traffic-wise on the air. So you can adjust that through filtering. Filters are adjustable on many radios, some not so much. We'll, we'll talk about one that doesn't here, but on the 705 it is, and likely on that 10 meter radio it is not. It's probably just a fixed filter. But filtering can be often controlled just by just clicking this button. That's not the button, that's the battery. Filter, that's a 2.4K filter. See all that extra noise, that white noise we picked up? Not very good sound. Let's click it again. No battery, nope. 
Now we just reduced it down to a 350K filter. See how that audio just pops right out? And if there was a, an adjacent frequency or adjacent operator on, you know, 500 hertz up, then this filter would kind of like ignore it. And that's easiest to see if we hold down the filter button. So this is the size of the filter. The bandwidth is set to 350. We can adjust that and watch as I adjust it. Oh, sorry. Some folks are saying you can't hear the CW signal. Apologize for that. So for those of you that are uh, FT817 and 818 operators, like, like this radio right here, off the side, when we talk about the physical filters that you can buy and drop in the case, the 500 hertz wide filter, this is what it would sound like at 500 hertz wide. Right? So filtering is vitally important. Let's do this same thing, talk about filters, but move back up to the audio or the, the voice portion, single sideband, and show you what that sounds like up there. So we're going to change the mode again. We're going to go to single sideband. See all that noise we just picked up? Because the bandwidth opened up. We're drinking through a boba straw of RF versus a tea straw. Coffee straw. Let's go back up to 100K. And we will click the, the 15 and slide up the frequency space until we get back to the single sideband portion. All right. We got a couple of stations here. Let's find one of them. Big signal right here. Come on, buddy. I made one of this guy. Yeah, let's go to this guy. Perfect. Maritime net. All right. So we've got a filter set to something. I don't know what it is right now, so let's hold down the filter button. 2.4K. Generally, that's... That's pretty good for uh, filtering for single sideband. So I'm going to go to filter. Three, The filter 3 is 1.8K. Let's hear they, how they sound on 1.8K filter. So we're, th we're, we're, we're going from Boba to McDonald's straw, okay, for receiving. Indeed, Jody, I, I love the... 1.8K throttled down. They sound a little compressed, a little distorted because we're, we're, we're cutting off the highs and the lows of that signal or that audio. Hey, thanks, Andre. The straw analogy works pretty good for me. That's 1.8. Let's change it back to... Here's 2.4. 9 and 5.9 uh, and clear the bell. Over. Uh, Roger, Roger. Thank you again for the call. A and uh, thank to you. Day. And you have a good evening, good weekend. I'll be clear with uh, November 7 Whiskey Delta Foxtrot and turning the net back on to the W6 Delta. All right, hopefully you heard that. Was that a lot easier? Hopefully you heard the difference between the 1.8 and the 2.4K. But what's the point of all this? Well, we, we explained why if there's a contest weekend or there's a lot of uh, space and it's very contested that you may want to bring the filter down, particularly for Morse code. For voice, though, 
Why wouldn't you want to do that for voice? Well, some stations can be running into each other and semi-adjacent for like contesting. But if you're out just doing like a parks on the air or whatnot, you don't need a really wide filter. 2.4K is about what I do on Parks on the Air. I don't go much lower than that. And I, I don't go much higher than that either. Unless I have a very low noise environment, I won't really bring the filter bandwidth higher than 2.4. 3 sounds really good. Um, 3K sounds really good. But your noise floor is going to have to be commensurate to that. If you're a very, very, very noisy radio, very noisy environment, some of the best things you can do is kind of reduce the filtering. That's why often Morse code is a really good mode to learn, if particularly if you are in a heavy noise environment because of the just the nastiness that you'll pick up uh, playing around with some of this stuff. Somebody asked what PB1, uh, sorry, PBT1 and PBT2 is. That's your passband. Where is the button for passband? I forget on this guy. I think I have to be out of... I know how to do passband on um, the 7300. I haven't had to do it on this guy. Oh, yeah, that's it. Doop, doop, doop. Yeah, there it is. All right, hold on. Let's go back to filter. Yeah, all right. So here's here's your, here's your passband adjustment. Are we focused? Yeah, we're focused. All right, sorry about that. So if you shift we're now shifting off and, and let's give you some audio example of that let's find another signal okay here we go For those that are seeing that control for the first time, the closest example that I have is the BFO control that some of you may have played around with uh, if you were a shortwave listener, but it allows you to skew the passband for highs and lows on the received signal and actually kind of adjust it off of each other, if you will, to avoid certain types of an interference or to just narrow the frequency a bit. Okay, let's see what time we got. Oh, we don't have much time left. We Wow, we blew through that quick. Well, that, <laughs> but I'm not kidding when I say, boy, th these hours go by so fast. Let's see if there's more questions. Go ahead and throw, uh, throw the questions in there. And I'll spend the last couple of minutes here answering questions. I will tell everybody, sorry, there will be no after chat today. At least uh, there are no after chat that I'll be attending. Everybody's welcome to join the Discord, join the after chat. There'll be tons of folks answering questions. If you have your questions and you'd like to text chat them in or do voice chat, feel free to, to join us over on the Discord. I, however, my dad is in town. It's his birthday. And all he wanted to do was go to Not Scary Farm. So I said, okay, sure. So we're taking uh, Ben, just Ben. Edison's probably too young. And he and I and my dad are going to Not Scary farm tonight he absolutely loves all the decorations and the haunted houses that they do uh which is so much fun so we'll, we'll be doing that but i will take questions the last couple of minutes here thank you jack in the shop appreciate it thank you brian i will i will tell him yeah so the point of this is you know I know most of uh, most of the folks in here, and, and thank you for uh, entertaining me. Most of the folks know much of this. Uh, K F O J N E. Good question. Good question. I can show you that again. Um, but what I was saying is, most of the folks know a lot of this stuff. But I think this is good for the newcomers to remember. So, what does A F a squelch and gain do? All right. So A F th that's it's a multi button, right? So A F is your volume control. So if I just knock that down, volume gone. 
There's your volume control. If watch the waterfall, if I go to RF gain, click it, and I dial it back, look at it, it just dies out. It's like you're deafening the receiver. That's what we're doing. We're deafening the receiver with RF gain. Again, if you live in a high noise floor environment, you may need to go in there and kind of like knock the receiver back a little bit. As far as squelch, squelch is the same functionality if you're using a, a VHF radio or mobile radio. It will mute the speaker. And it's, it's actually best visualized right there. If you see this, look at this, check this out. So watch, watch that, watch this white little arrow. So there's my noise floor. See the noise floor? It's right there at the S5 level. It's dancing between S3 and S5. And that white arrow is above the noise floor. So if we slide over, this signal looks like it's stronger than S3, S5. Let's scroll over. Uh, it's barely. So let's let's go in here and, and lower the squelch a tad. So the white arrow's moving. And the squelch is now bouncing up and down. The speaker's dropping out and coming in and dropping out and coming in. We generally don't use squelch. I'll tell you what, I, I've used Squelch more in the last uh, five minutes of demonstrating this than I've ever used on that radio. I never use Squelch. Never, ever, ever use Squelch. All right. Thanks, everybody, in the uh, in the chat for being admins, killing all that stuff. K-Murder got that last one. <clears throat> Look out for Frank and Barry at Newt's Berry Farm. I will. Thank you. Yeah, Jody, I've got a whole bunch of those uh, coming up. I usually like to wait till the obviously the last months of the year to kind of tell you, hey, what are the best radios? Hey, but hey, newsflash on this. I, I, I've done a couple of videos. You know, I, I did one in 2020 and 2021 on my favorite radios and my favorite things of the year. I, I have to tell you that there are plenty of really good radios that uh, I still recommend, and they're definitely older than like five plus years, right? So, um, yeah, I, I, I while I while I like to say, oh, these are the best radios that have come out in 2022. Th there's they're not necessarily the ones that I would recommend uh, above other radios, and so yes, I will talk about them. But there's a there's a whole bunch of radios that have been around for a while now that are still just great. Radios don't change as often as our, our cell phones do and laptops and all that. So oftentimes I, it's best for me to just say the best radios available today, uh, 2022 or whatnot. Oh, here, let me just take care of these guys for you. Bye-bye. Because they just keep coming back because they're getting uh, <laughs> timed out. All right, what time do we got? Got a couple of minutes left. I got to get on the road here shortly to get my... It, it's uh, Not Scary Farm locally starts at like 6.30 or 7 o'clock or something like that local time. So got to head out of here soon. So any more questions? Otherwise, I'll, I'll bid you all a... Uh, a happy evening and we'll catch up next week because next week is the Halloween episode, which I always try and do something fun for the Halloween episode. So we'll have to see what I come up with this year. Halloween ham radio videos are actually pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah, Andy, that's another good way of saying it. Best radio is what you can afford for what you want to do. As long as you know what you want to do and you have a fairly good, uh, fairly objective way of looking at things, then yeah, that's always the best way. Hey, thank you, Toby. Or Toby. Toby. Thank you, Toby. Let's see. Maybe show them uh, the built-in tuners. I don't think any of the radios I dragged out have built-in tuners. I don't use radios with built-in tuners that often. Once I get my uh, Elecraft KX2 swapped over to do, it can do external charging for the battery when it's internal, then I'll use that more. Yeah, thanks, uh, Lo Loki INL. I've got a bunch of background noise, and so I did my best with uh, holding the speaker up, but uh, I realized I probably should have used a different microphone, a secondary mic, but hopefully you got the idea. The concepts are all the same. Seventy six ten does have a built-in tuner. That's a good point, Don. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. A lot of people are saying you should go as Doctor Strangelove. Yeah, that's or no, was that was he actually actually Doctor Strangelove? I think he was Peter Sellers. I think so. Uh, oh boy, I think it's more than that. Nick, Nick has a good question. What's the breakdown between listeners versus talkers on Ham? Fifty fifty, or what would you say? It's probably more like seventy. Five twenty-five, if not more, meaning more listeners. Hmm. David Bohannon with a very good question. I would be shocked if we didn't see a Ken, a new Kenwood in the future. Shocked. All right, everybody. We have hit the hour. I appreciate you all watching. Make sure you uh, post comments for those that couldn't see this live. Your comments, I do read them, and I do write them down. They become live stream ideas for the future. If you'd like to have more control over what I talk about uh, on the live streams, feel free to join me over on Patreon. Check out the different levels. The producer level gets to vote on the first live stream topic of the month, which is quickly quickly approaching i'll be posting the vote to the patreons likely tomorrow and then we'll vote for a week and then the following week i will spend time getting ready for that show because it usually takes me about a week to do you know to get ready for the live streams and then we'll have a fun little uh, topic on that so there you go all right everybody yeah sorry i won't be joining you on the after chat but feel free to still go and have a hangout maybe go uh work some contacts with each other. We normally don't get the time to do that with all the questions or just uh, just answer newbie questions. Anybody who's new to Ham Radio, feel free to join us on the Discord. Go down to live stream chat and see who's there and hang out. Get ready for that spooky, uh, the spooky month. Tis the season. This is like the weekend before Halloween, which is generally my, well, technically the two weekends before. We start watching holiday Halloween movies, so enjoy all right we'll wrap things up with the whoop, nope there we go thank you to the patrons <laughs> reminder that that vote will be going out likely tomorrow for those that are interested in deciding what i talk about next two weekends from now oh hey toby i'll have to look into that saying uh ukraine people in the in ukraine are back operating radio give them some love if you hear them wow i mean they're still they're still fighting. So how's that? How's that work? That's interesting. Trying to get this quote on a list of screen of Raspberry Pi. What's your nickname for that water ball? <laughs> it's just the 64 ounce jug of water. Literally, this is full of water. I, I fill it up before the live stream. And this usually gets me all the way through the, uh, the live stream and the after chat. 64 ounces. That's generally I'll drink a couple of these a day. <laughs> I do like water. Hey, Scott, right on. 73 from Bangkok. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. And again, thank you to the patrons. Appreciate you. No beer, because I'm going to literally hop in a car and drive my dad and son to uh, to Knott's Berry Farm, but I will probably have one while I'm there. Oh, also, there's still if you're still watching, I will be uh, beaconing out APRS. So if you can hear me, send me a message back. See if we can, we can make some contacts from Scary Farm. That'd be fun. Now I wish I had that, uh, that Yesu hand mic. We can't. We could send potato images to each other. Uh, we could send potato images to each other over the HT. So I'll be squawking APRS. Is that no? This is a Radio Shack shirt. This is a Radio Shack shirt. But we we're probably going to work on something similar. Still need a date. Uh oh, I asked you. I asked you to tell me the date. I'll go look at my DMs right now. Sorry, I might have missed it. I will get back to you. Okay, guys, uh, I will play you out with some memes. Have a great rest of the weekend. See ya.
All right, everybody. So.